three minutes. Okay. So because I wasn't recording, I'm going to just go start all over again. How about that? Radio. So since I wasn't recording, so now I am recording. So let's do, so what Catenio um, introduces uh, multiplication, he does it in a fairly straightforward way. He will say something like, show me two red rods placed end to end. And we can call that two times two. Would it be more likely to start with like a different number? Just just wondering because there's there's um you know confusion there as to which way around the two goes. Uh, this is how he does it in the book two, and I think I know why because he starts you off looking at the like n noticing the two plus two and two times two are the same. Okay, I think that's why he. I think that's why he does it in the book. This is how it shows up. Mm -hmm. He does two times two first. And he will have you, so <clears throat> you can read it as two times two, or we can read this as two, two times two, or we could say this, we could read this as of, two of the twos. All right, I'm going to put my... So I'm going to make another train. Show me two white rods, end to end, and how do you think, what, what do you think we could call this? Other than two plus two. Other, other than two plus two, other than one plus one. It is, those are actually units. So other than one plus one, what would we call this? Anyone? Two times one. Okay, two times one or two of the ones. And if we made a train of three, right, three white rods, what would we call that? Three times one. Three times one or three of the ones. And what we want to do is make sure the kids have a thorough understanding of the difference between addition and multiplication. And so we can build this train here. Right, and we want to say build me a train that is two times two plus one, and build another train that is two times two, or two plus, so two plus two plus one, and one that is two times two plus one. So let's build those trains, and what do we notice? They're the same. They are the same. What happens if we build a train that is three times two plus one and one that is three plus two plus one? So we can build that one. And can we find a rod that is equal to, darn it, we find a rod that is equal to three times two plus one and a rod that is equal to three plus two plus one. Select the top one. I'll put a green in the bottom one. So what do we notice? What is what do we notice about these two trains? Oh, 
Well, the bottom one hasn't got multiples of one rod in. Ah, so the bottom one. Okay, hold on. I'm going to do text. So the bottom. Chain doesn't have multiples. What else? I noticed there is only one red in the bottom train. There isn't any green in the top. Ah. There's no greed green rods in the top train. I noticed that the bottom one is smaller. They've both got a one in. They both have a one. I'm not going to keep typing these. I noticed the top one actually has three of the red rods. So there's three red rods there. And the bottom one only has one red rod. And there's a no green in the top and there's a green in the bottom one. So we kind of have that there. So we want to keep playing this kind of thing. I'm going to select this stuff and get rid of it. We want to play the same kind of thing. We would want to do it with, say, um, Mm, let's do, and we would want to build this train. So we would do a white plus a white plus a two. We'll snag another white. And then we would look at different ways that we could write this train. Okay, I'm popping out now. Okay. So how, how else can, so we could write it one plus one. I could move this over here. I'll do this. So that's one way to write this train. How else could we write that train? Sorry, what was the question? I said, this is one way right here. This is one way we could write the train. How else could we write this train? What else could we write for this train here? Two white, two of white, or two of one, plus one red, plus one white. Plus red, plus, oh, we're gonna, actually we're gonna use numbers right now just because we do numbers up to 20. So I'm gonna just use a number here plus, so two times one plus two plus one. Now, if your rule is they have to write it exactly the way it is, but we could also use the commutative property and we could do three times one plus two. So you could do that. And what we want to make sure is that the kids have a thorough understanding of the difference in the signs and that they're using the signs correctly. And when you would introduce the symbols, so I already introduced them here, but when you introduce them and you would say, we will say for two reds end to end, we can say, red plus red. When we introduce the symbols, we would say, we say red plus, or red times red, or two of the reds, or two times two. 
and we will write that 2 times 2 two or two of the twos, however you want to use it. I like using the word of because it tells you how many of something you have and it brings clarity, especially when you get to fractions. Because we often talk, I think I maybe mentioned this, I don't know which class I mentioned this to, but we talk of multiplication often as groups of something and uh, a half of a a half of a quarter group doesn't make any sense. There's no way to really group that for me or multiple. How do I repeat it? If it's repeated addition, if that's what it, it, it is, and it is repeated addition, but how do we repeat? How do we do repeat addition with half of a quarter? So the, the two of something that tells me how much of something that I have, and that brings clarity to what we're talking about when we talk about multiplication. So if I have half of a quarter, that tells me I have the quarter kind and I need half of that. Does that make sense to everyone? Itania uses times, and I think that's also fine. You just have to decide what you want. So once we get into doing multiplication, and we've played around with sentences like this, and there's a whole bunch of them in, in, in uh, chapter, I think it's chapter five of book one. So he goes through this a lot, and that's basically what he's talking about. And the reason we're doing it is to just help the kids understand the differences. And he's going to bring in fractions in here as well, but I want to address fractions after I'm done doing this. I want to bring that in just a little bit later, if we get to it at all. Okay. Um, we're going yeah, we're to... Back. Huh? We just got back. You've been frozen for a bit. Oh, okay. So... <laughs> so did you hear the part about how we introduced the written language? Yeah. Yeah, we heard that. It was just after that. that okay, approach. so the next thing, yeah, so the next thing, Gitanio, I want to stick with the numbers. I was just saying that Gitanio introduces fractions, and that's part of this, but I want to leave fractions till uh, the later, later on in this training, if we get to it at all, this training. I was very ambitious when I wrote my, my thing here, and, um, and I have fractions in two places, and I'm not sure we're going to get to it all. So I want to do this part first, which is building multiplication um, rectangles. So, because we're looking for factors and there's ways that we can look for factors. We did this one last week and we put down this and we were looking for all the trains, right? We did this, we can do this for 10. Last week we did it with just calling it an orange rod. And we'll do the two yellows. And we will say that, because these are the only trains we could make for 10, that when we have trains of a single color, those are factors of whatever quantity we have up here. So I have, a train for the orange rod, a single color train equivalent to the orange rod, one of them would be five of the twos, and this one would be two of the fives. And we want to do a little noticing and wondering here, because this is going to be important. These are um, we're going to, this is how the fractions come into play. We're going to see that this one in a little bit is one fifth, and this one is one half. So when we're looking at this, we're going to let the kids know um, that these are factors. We're going to keep a table of factors. And if you don't have it already, I have it over at Learning Well at Home. 
in the file section, there should be the table of factors in there. And we want to keep track of, let me see if I can just bring it up over here, table of factors. Okay. All right. So on here, we have, let's say 10, we want to go all the way down. You do not have to fill this chart in in order. It's unnecessary. So I just have the charts. This is pretty much all the information you're going to need on the chart. But we would want to fill this in. Come on. Yes, I want to quit. We would fill this in in order. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way up to, you would probably keep this up to 100 or more if you want to, it's up to you guys. So you don't need to do the numbers in order. That's, un, that's not necessary. But let's say we're working on the number four. We would say the factors are two and four. The number of factors, it has two total factors, one and four. I mean, if you wanna put them in, you can. Well, I do have four there. So one and four and two and two. So, okay, the number of factors is three. Uh, is the number of factors odd or even? The number of factors is odd. Is it prime? It is not prime. And is for a square number? We got two times two. You don't have to dress squares now. So you don't have to fill in this column, but eventually you'll want to. And I just kept, we kept this starting in chapter, when we started doing chapter four, and we have it just in our math notebooks. And it carries, on, I mean, I, you guys are in a classroom, so this will be a little harder, but since I homeschool, we just keep this in our math notebook and we keep filling it out. And so, yes, it is square. And we're going to notice patterns on this table of factors as you start to fill it out. And you should be able to look for divisibility rules. Um, you're gonna be able to find patterns um, all, all over the place in this, in the table. And I don't have time to go into it all right now, but um, it is a worthy thing to keep a table of factors. All right, I am going to close this out, get my mouse. All right, so if we're keeping, oh, let's erase all this stuff I just did. So we have our factors, and we wanna pull these out and start building rectangles with them. And we're gonna look at the different kinds of shapes that the rods make. And they're all gonna be rectangles. And on this side, we will notice that we have, this side is two, and that this side is, we're gonna count the units across. So this is one, two, three, four, five. So it's two by five. So if we had a rectangle, this side would be two, this side would be five, and its total area is 10. And one of the things, I'm gonna just do this in separate so I can actually erase the lines. When you look at the long division sign, see what happens here. It actually is, this here is shorthand for rectangle. So it's just shorthand for the area. And when we talk about using the area model, it's here because it's been used for a long, long, long time. But it's actually shorthand for rectangle or area. So over here we have another rectangle we can make. And I'm gonna do So this time it's five. And this is two. And the area is still going to be 10. And then on this one, it's 
it's 10 this way and it's one this way. And we could make another one with all whites. I don't have enough whites, but it's area or the, the down number would be one and all the way across it would be 10, be 10 units all the way across. So we want to play around with these so the kids get the, the idea of like um, what multiplication and division are. So when we're looking at, um, and that, that we can see that they're related. If I have, if I could draw, this would help with a mouse, but I can't. Getting better, but I'm still like, okay. <sighs> Let's do this. Ha. Huh. All right. Is Phil nope, he's not. All right. If I yep, have way this, out here. Yeah, I'm talking to somebody else in my hallway. So if I have this number here, which is the area, and this number, well, this should probably be five to make it look then I can find this number over here. If I have these two numbers, I can find this one here. And if I have this one, and this one, I can find this one up here. Okay. Do you have any questions on that? I remember asking one of my teachers in school, why do we do division in that, you know, the, the box for division? And they had no idea. Because it means area. How cool is that? Yeah, it's excellent. I was having a conversation once with somebody who said that we shouldn't use the area model uh, for multiplication and division. And I said, well, what do you think, what do you think the whole, what does that mean? What do we use, why do we use that? If it's short for area model, it's short for the area. How we got it. So we've been doing it a long time. All right, so when we do, um, I'm going to tidy up my rods here again. All right, you're going to see, um, we have three and we have two, right? We have three times two and these are our factors. And we're going to um, look at later what Gitten will have you do is, is multiply this times two. This is a halving and doubling, which you're going to find in book two but he's gonna lay the foundation here. And we're going to be building, instead of building rectangles, which we did before, so we had this rectangle and we had five rectangles. So let's go back to what I was doing, I'll do this. We have two, we have these two, and we can see that this is actually five long. And the kids can put their rods up there, let them do it, let them check and make sure that that's actually five. And instead of having to build the rectangle, because if you start building large numbers, that's annoying, right? We want to work faster. So we can put them across and we can see, and we're just going to make a cross. And we're going to just now look at the things that we can figure out from this cross. So we said that five times two equals 10. We could also say that 10 or two times five equals 10. I want to show you something really cool. If I pull this off and pull it out, and I would say how many fives are in 10? I'm going to take my 10 out and I'm going to see what is left. 
How many fives are in 10? Yep, so there are two fives and 10. And we're gonna put them back together and I would say how many twos are in 10? And I can pull this out of my 10 and I can see what's left and how many twos are in 10? Five. Hello, I'm back. All right. 10 divided by 2 equals 5. So I'm going to pull them out at the same time. Now, what is half, right? That's the, the denominator on half is 2. What is half of 2? I'm going to just pull out my 2, and I will find out what that is. What's left? Five. Half of 10. So not half of two. So I don't know if that's what I said, but half of 10 equals five. And I can put this back and I would say, what is a fifth of 10? So is it, is it obvious that um, the denominator of a fraction is the same as division? Well, that's what you want to get them to. So when we write this down, this is what we're, we're going to have the kids get to. So we want so to- So how do you get- So you to notice and wonder. So if you divide them, and so we can set them up both ways. So it's this way, I went to the shortcut. You missed this little part because we did it last week, but I'm going to move these over. Uh, because we already know that one fifth of 10 is two. So then we're seeing the relationship when we do it again. Yeah, so we can set this back up. So we'll even put our whites in here. I don't have enough whites, but you'll just have to imagine the last. We know there are whites. Okay. All right. So we would say how many twos are in 10? So, mm -hmm. so, so there's five. We can count them, there's five. How many fives are in 10? There's two. Um, what is half of 10? So half five. Of, right, five. So we would write all these statements down that we can make. And then we're going to mm -hmm. do a little bit of notice and wondering. Somebody's going to go, hey. Yeah. So if you had a, a class, somebody's going to go, hey, this is all the same. Um, mm -hmm. But if you only have one child, so it, particularly my child, we didn't notice that right away. That wasn't something that he just came up with and said, hey. Um, finally, when we made him do, um, like we were doing this over and over, and it did not register with him that this is that that he could just switch out the numbers. He was figuring it out every time, and it wasn't until um, I don't know a couple of weeks ago when he was like, "Hey, that's really cool. This is just the same numbers over and over again." Yes, that's what this is. <laughs> so, um, if somebody had been here to point that out to him, and I didn't point it out, I've been waiting for him to catch up. So this has been he's in book two. Um, yeah. and been playing with fractions forever and it's just something that he realized and that's okay because you know this is something that some of my moms when we were playing with this recently realized like oh this is all the same stuff yeah so we would say fractions and this is how Gitanyo when he talks about fractions being the inverse of multiplication and then division is how you get there yeah I'm seeing that with my son because we played a bit with some multiplication this week and he j just totally clicked. It was no problem to think of our fractions as the inverse for him. It was just so obvious. Uh-huh. Hmm. Yep. And then, yep, division is how we get there. Um, let me see. So, so when we're doing these things, and I just want to show you where you got, where this is going because I had people who didn't make the crosses because they thought they were silly and they just made the rectangles. 
Okay, they're just building rectangles. So let's say I have, um, and we would not be introducing this until we have a thorough grasp of numbers one to 20, just yep. so you know. Um, so if I have right here, two times five, that's 10, and I wanna double 10. So now I have um, five times two, and I wanna double that. So I'm gonna times it times two again. I'm going to, and so now I should have a total of, so now, now, I, now I should have two orange rods, so I have 20. And I want to, then to show that, I would just put another orange, or orange, another red rod on top of my red rod that's already here. So let's mm. say, now I want half of, I want half of this structure that's right here. Five times two times two. I want half of that. Well, half of that will be half of five times two times two is five times two. Yeah. I want a fourth of this. So I'm gonna pull out two of them because two times two is four. So a fourth of five times two times two is what? Five. Five. Now we can write 20 here also. So what would a fifth be? What would a fifth of five times two times two be? Two times two. Yeah, a fifth of five times two times two equals four. We're gonna to start to get, when you start writing them out like this, then you start solving problems you have with algebra later on. Um, when we can see how, how um, variables cancel each other out, if we start writing these all down now, you can see how that all works later on. <clears throat> so we can, by playing with this, look at creating all the different factors for 20. We have one and 20, but we have five times two times two. So using our associative and commutative properties, five times two times two, we're going to look at five times two is 10 times two. So we could combine these two together. We can combine these two together. And now we have five times four, right? And we could double it again, or we could triple it and throw on a three. So I'm not gonna go into all of this because we're gonna do this later on in the next couple of weeks, but this is where this is headed and this is why you shouldn't skip it because this is essential for them to understand um, multiplication. And this is how Gitanio gets them to multiplying numbers. And he calls um, laying these, this, he calls these things milestones. All right. Um, Which things does he call milestones? So when you start doubling numbers, he sets them up as milestones. So that's what okay. he calls them. So if you keep doubling numbers or you triple numbers, and then he has those as you figure out what the numbers are, and the kids can mentally double and have numbers. And there's something that happens when you double when you pay attention to doubling one number and when you double one number, the other one halves when you're making your factors. So that multiplication, and I can show this to you now because this will be, this solves so many issues. But when we do long division, we're using lots of, we're gonna use milestones and he has this set up so that, let's say we have 125 and I wanna divide by 25. Let's do 35. 
or even 40, because that was 125 is easier. So I'm like second grade. I don't know. I, maybe there's four in there, right? Maybe there's four 25s in there. So I'm going to put a um, hundred down. Oh, nope. There's got to be another one. Oh, well, that's okay. Cause you know what? I don't have to worry about it. Right. Cause I'm going to go over here and I'm going to write four and look, there's another one that I can see. So right here's another one and this is it. This is 20 with the remainder of 20 and I have five total and that's up. I can put that up here. So we're just instead of, so what we're using is the milestones that we know for sure. And then we just keep subtracting. So we have repeated addition and the division is just repeated subtraction. And this is how long division is done. And when they do these having and doublings and triplings, we can kind of get an idea by doubling this number multiple times, we can get fairly close to this. Yeah. Um, or tripling it, we can get fairly close, and that's how we do long division. No, um, as I had one of my one of my moms said, so you have to erase this, and then you get a hole in your paper. And now you're in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen yeah. that called chunking elsewhere. They call that what? Chunking. Okay. That method of long division. Okay. Well, if he didn't call it chunking, he just called it repeated subtraction. And therefore, long division takes 20 minutes to teach. We're done. Just yeah. get as close as you can and keep writing it down until you're done. Yeah. All right. So let's do, um, let's see, I got 10 minutes. I want to do division with remainders because that is part of what he does. And then we will do staircases that count. I want to do staircases, actually. All right, because they should be played with. So we build staircases, and we can build them this way. And this is a staircase. And how? What is the difference between each step? Each step has a common difference of one, so right? So each time we go up a step, we're counting plus one. This is plus another plus one, plus one, plus one, plus one. All right, but now I want to build a staircase and we're gonna have to do it with like twos because it, it builds too fast. So we have two. And I want to do this staircase, I want it to count times two. So this one over here is a staircase that counts plus one. And we could have a staircase that counts plus two. We can have a staircase that counts plus five. So the difference between each step is five. But this is how we normally count. So it's in a staircase that counts plus one, five, the fifth step, one, two, three, four, five, is five. But let's do a staircase that counts times two. What will the next step be after this one? Pink. Okay, and what will the next one be? Brown. Brown, eight. And then I have to move it down here because I'm going to run out of room. So the next one will be what? Orange plus dark, right? All right. So you can see how it grows. So in a staircase that counts times two, what is the four steps. 16. 16. Boys and girls, you just did logarithms. It's beautiful. I saw you, you did that with a class, I don't know, last year went before and I was like, oh, wow, look what she did. That's so cool. You didn't say about it at the time. You just did it. Mm-hmm. 
So that's how, and that's, that's exactly what we're talking about. But doing and building staircases that count and multiplying, um, we did this in our driveway with a unit. And then we did times 10. So we have 10. And then we took out a piece of string because you can't build these with the rods. It'll take forever. And then we counted 10 of that length. And then we counted 10 of that length. And you see how big these numbers start to actually get to have some kind of perspective of what's happening when we multiply over and over again. So the other thing that we have here, our first, our first stair here. So this is for you guys. You don't need to show this to your kids, right? yet but the first one is two the second step is two times two or two squared this the third step is two times two times two or two cubed and this one is two times two times two times two or two to the fourth. I'm at the fourth one. I'm up here and I say I'm at 16. And I want to go back. Um, But the fourth root is 16. So 16 to the quarter power would be what? So instead of going forward this time, one, two, three, four, we're going back. One, two, three, four. And that would be what? Two. Two. So what would 16 to the two quarters be? Not quite all the way back. We're going to go two steps back. Oh, four. So 16 to the three quarters would be eight. eight. And 16 to the first power would be 16. 16. There you go. You just did cube roots <laughs> or quarter roots. You just did this. So this would be the normal notation for this would be. So we get the square 16 to the, well, I don't know how we wouldn't do that one in here. We would have to do it up here with some other notation over here, but that's where you've got it. All right, what time is it? 24. I think I have time to do division with remainders. Do you guys have any questions? This stuff will come up later. Um, so I wouldn't go showing this to your kids unless you have like fifth and sixth graders you're teaching. But the building the staircases and playing with staircases that count is absolutely something we did in book one. And it is no big deal. For my son, he has no idea if he's playing with logarithms in first grade. Had no idea. He just thinks they're fun to play with. So if you have a great big dining room floor and you have lots of rods, you can keep doubling and doubling or tripling or however much. It starts, they get to get really long fairly quickly though. So you need space. And play with them and do staircases that are plus two. And what's the fifth step? And that helps you see how we get our counting numbers. I mean, the reason it's eight, it's because it's the eighth step. All right. Anyway, so. Here we will have what Gatenio calls the end caps. He doesn't call them remainders. Well, he does call them remainders. The, the BBL does not call these remainders. They call them end caps. So how many threes are in 10? Three. Three with a remainder of 
one and cap of one. So we would want to build for different numbers, um, different rods to go through. This is very interesting to do is to go through all the rods. So this one has no remainder. So that's five of the reds. So there's three fives. I have to come up with a better way to do this so I can write it mathematically and not just write my answers down. Okay. So 10 divided by three equals three remainder one. 10 divided by two equals five. I should have put that one up top, but I didn't. All right, 10 divided by four equals, so let's put fours in there and see what kind of end cap we get. We get a two. The two with our end cap of two. And then we will go to five. So we already did that one. So I'll put it in anyway. Now let's see what's going to happen. Equals one remainder Four. What will the next one do you think be? One remainder three. Yeah, then it's going to go one remainder three, one remainder two, two, and then one remainder one. So it's really interesting to have the kids pick out at what point when we're looking at the remainders, the varying remainders up here, the various different ones, when you can actually get more than one uh, car in your train, what do the remainders happen to be? Um, and then at what point can you, can they predict at what point there will only be one car with a remainder? So if you had, um, 19 to 18. Excuse me. So if we did 18, at what point would you have only one car with a remainder? Orange. Orange. Now you could keep going with 11s. So you could have, um, you could have an 11 here. And then the other, the other combination that counts as a single rod. This is orange. The white orange is orange, and the red orange they call orange. So if you did a orange, you would have only one, and if you did orange, you would only have one. This is very hard to actually hear the differences <clears throat> when you say them. So but white orange and red you, orange. Why do you not keep going? Why do you only count up, well, you to, keep up to orange as one? Um, I, I think the only reason they did these in the, for the younger kids is because in the first, first grade, you're only going up to numbers to 20. And if you double these, so if you double 23 or double 23, if you double 13, right, you're going to end up with 26. And they were kind of trying to keep the numbers under 20. So right. that's the only reason why. But you could keep going. There's nothing that would stop you from doing it. The only, the only time you would maybe want to consider that would be like, say, if you had a classroom of kids and you were trying to keep consistent what you were introducing in one class and then having a teacher come in the next year. So that's when you would want to have some. But when you're at home and it's just you and your kids, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. So there's, somebody asked me if we were going straight through the books and I, they were going through just book two 
And I said, once we hit book two, once we were done with book one, we stayed in book one. But once I hit book two, we're covering stuff in book seven and book five and we're, we're all over the place. All right, and that is pretty much how we, the division goes with the remainders. Any questions? I think I covered it all. Well done. Are they still here? I can't see the screen. Know. Yeah, they are. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> On mine, it just kind of closed in. Do you guys have any questions? No. Yeah, I just had a question. Could you spell the word, I think it's cap, as an end cap? Okay, thank you. We just weren't sure if it was gap or cap or something yeah, it's else. A, it's an end cap. I don't know why that um, the BBL doesn't call it a remainder. And you don't have to do what they do. Um, but that is what they chose to use instead of remainder. And I know that they are very, very strict. And Arthur Powell, who trained under, who, who I went to a, a training in, in New York at the BBL, and it's the only school using Gitanio still. They are very, very serious about not using, that this is not two times two. This is two of the twos. This is read of. And they are very strict about that. And they also, where, where you see that Gitanio uses times, and Gitanio uses the word remainder, and they do not. And they're very pretty serious about that too. Those are called end caps. So why they're very serious, I don't know. I can see why on the of, that they're strict about that, for clarity's sake. Yeah, I can see that being helpful. Um, but, and they also don't use, this is never read as minus. This is always read as different. Mm -hmm. 